So this is my static bike trainer, Raspberry Pi project. And I've got a monitor here, which I got from Maplin probably about a decade ago. Uh, and I've got a Raspberry Pi here, and the controls on the Raspberry Pi are very simple. So I've got a feed in from the wheel sensor so that I can measure the speed and work out distance traveled and the speed traveled. Uh, and I've got uh, four buttons. So I've got a down button to go down, menu items, up button to go up, uh, and then enter in the middle to select a menu item and left and right are used um, for other options when doing editing and uh, during the actual training. I'll go through the menu options um, rather than as a camera over the top actually as a screen grab uh, so you can see more clearly exactly uh, what menu options are uh, and then later on I'll go for a circuit diagram of this even though it's a very simple circuit diagram I'll, I'll, I'll talk through a circuit diagram and I'll do a brief overview of the software as well and the software is available free to download on GitHub as well. So this is the real speed sensor. It's from a cycle computer, which I had probably about 30 years ago. Uh, it's just a reed switch in there and there's a wire coming all away from there. And then there's a magnet which is mounted on the wheel. And as the magnet passes reed switch, it switches the reed switch. So you know what each rotation of the wheel is and you time between that and you can then work out um, what the actual speed is in miles per hour or kilometers an hour. Uh, because you take the diameter of the wheel and you work out how far it goes in a certain amount of time. This is my bike static trainer uh, and the wheel nuts of the bike sit on top of the trainer there which supports all the weight and at the bottom there's a, a, a resistance wheel and the wheel of the bike turns this wheel uh, and that's what gives the bike resistance. So it gives me a decent resistance to kind of this, this one seems to suit me fine. I've not compared it against others, but when I got this one, which was probably a decade ago, it cost about £80, pounds, uh, and it's, it's really well built, a uh, good quality one. So I'm going to go through the features of the application. Um, I'm going to go through the menu, so they're just using the up and down, left and right buttons and enter button. Um, so the top menu item of the, of the overall screen um, takes you into the user. So if you uh, select user, you can then use up and down arrows to change the username and if you select an existing uh, user it will load up that profile from from historic the historic data uh, but if you put in a new username then it will create a new user for for you with a uh, with a blank um, profile so you can have multiple people using the same exercise bike and they're all retaining different um, data uh, and then level so Anything from uh, 0 uh, to 99, uh, and the lower the number, the lower the level, and as you progress, if you increase the number, you go up, you, it, you go up levels, uh, and the competitors get faster as you go up the levels. And then units, you can either have metric or imperial, so, um, so miles um, I tend to have because I'm British and we have miles on the roads, uh, but you can change it to kilom kilometres. Uh, and then music on or off so the actual application could have like a library of mp3 files uh, and if you want music playing whilst you're exercising you can turn it on or off and you can do that during an event anyway if i go back so the first exercise type is unrestricted so if i go into that it will just start a session uh, so this you just cycle and you go for as long as you want there's no finish and you just compete against the other riders but just on uh, an undetermined length of ride um, if you hit enter during an event you can actually exit the event uh, but or you can cancel to go back into the event if you press the left um, uh, left key whilst you're in the event it pauses the event and press the left key again to unpause the event or if you press the right key it starts music playing from your mp3 library and press the right key again and it will fade out uh, so if I exit this event, uh, the next type of event is a time race. So where you're going for a certain period of time. So the different uh, periods are one minute, five minutes, 10, 15, 30, one hour, two hours, four hours, eight hours, and 12 hours. Um, and the next type of uh, event is a distance event, uh, half a mile, one mile, two miles. And these would be kilometers if you selected kilometers. Um, so each lap, each virtual lap is a, a one mile lap um, and if you if you start it will just go through the usual starting um, thing. If 
by exit the event. Uh, and then uh, you can configure the Azure application. So you can set the wheel size of your bike so that you can calculate the miles per hour accurately and, and the distance you've uh, traveled accurately. And then there's a network option. Now I haven't actually implemented this network option. It's for maybe a future release uh, where you can actually compete rather than against computer cyclists. You actually compete against other um, people using the same application across the network. Uh, but that's not implemented at this time. Uh, then to come out, to quit the application, you'd use this power off option and it gives you a, a cancel or power, or power off confirmation. So that's hidden in that menu. Uh, then you go back and then the final uh, menu option is records. Uh, and it just tells you what the result in the last event you took part in was. And this is just uh, running my test system just to, so I get a good screen grab of this. And it tells you uh, the time trial records. So it tells you the user that got the record and what the records were. So in time trials, it'll be the record will be the distance traveled within that time. Uh, and then below the time trial records, uh, there is uh, distance uh, records. Uh, and so for a particular distance, how long it took to get that distance. And if you press key, then it'll come, come out of that. I'll press enter, I should say. Uh, and the, the records automatically get displayed at the end of an event. So after you've finished an event, um, it will display the records. This is the circuit diagram. It's a very simple circuit, so there's not much to explain. Uh, so the wheel sensor here is just a reed switch, which gets activated by a magnet. Uh, and that just switches on the transistor here. And the transistor will pull, pull the value down to ground um, when it's switched on. Or typically it'll be pulled up to 3.3 volts. So it just turns it the signal from the wheel into a, a 3.3 volt square wave. Uh, and then, and that goes into this GPIO 10, which is where the, config, uh, the software is configured. It's easy to reconfigure for different pins. And then it's just a series of other switches, the up, down, left, right, and enter key. And they're just um, pulled up in software. Uh, and then put, when you uh, press the switch, it pulls it down to ground. So this is the source code, which I've released on GitHub as open source. Um, so you just looked at the circuit diagram. Uh, I'm just going to look at one other file at the minute here, which is the README text file, uh, because there's a there's information in here about how how it's configured and everything. Uh, but just going to go over just a little bit of the software here. So the software is set up as classes. So the main class is this bicycle.py, which is which is what you run, uh, and then. There's a cycle class, and so each opponent is an instance of the cycle class, plus uh, the pl the user's cycle is an instance of that sa same cycle class. Uh, and then there's a user class, uh, which is basically a user which is sitting on each cycle. So there's an instance of each, uh, a user for each of the um, opponents. Uh, and then an event class, which is the actual uh, event that you're running. So um, if you select a time trial, it would load up a time trial event into that event class and you, you'll run that event. Or if you selected um, a distance uh, race, then the distance race would be uh, loaded as an event and you'd, you'd run that. Then for the configuration, there's a user editing uh, class for editing the user. And um, an actual f all the display uh, is done in the, in the display class. Um, so everything, anything which is drawn onto the screen, you'll find there. Uh, and there's a menu class as well um, to, to handle the menus. So each menu, menu is an instance of the menu class, but with different values, depending on what the options are in that menu. And then another th thing which is probably of interest is the state machine. So wh when you enter the the application it starts off as an uh, initial state and it can go through these uh, different um, states depending on whether you select uh, menus or go into the records so it, it just goes around here but there's this is the main these, this is the main states in in this part here which you can go through uh, but there's also once you start an event there's like a sub state of the event state which is uh, shown here so you, when you go into an event First of all, we, you, the event's not running, and it goes through different uh, states, depending on what it needs to display on the screen at the time. So you can do a false start. So if, if before the event starts, you start cycling, it'll go into a false start, and then go back onto the, 
to um, start in the event again. And in event running, you can go into a pause, pause state or you can come back. If you're on pause, it comes back around here. Uh, and then you go into a uh, finished state and you can get this, uh, the, the uh, records displayed on the screen. Or you can go into the exit menu at any, any stage.